Hello everybody, how are you? Welcome back. This is my Schumacher Atom 2 GT12 race car. And this is a hot toddy. Hot water, lemon, honey and whiskey. Because I am absolutely loaded with some sort of virus. <laughs> it's not the vid, I've already tested. Um, Rachel works at a medical practice. She caught something there, brought it home and because she's such a charitable soul, decided to share it with everybody. Unfortunately for me, everybody is this guy, because I'm the only other person who lives here. So, thanks Rachel. Regulars to the channel will know I wanted to go racing again for the first time in 17 years. 2005 was the last time I did any sort of sanctioned racing. And I wanted to do touring cars, but they don't really exist anymore. The touring car classes is all but dead in the UK anyway. So GT12 racing is where it's at. So I got myself a GT12 car. And last week, as in a week ago tomorrow, on Friday, this is Thursday as I'm recording this, I did racing. Yeah. And it went pretty well, I think. It went pretty well. Um, on the way to the racing, I um, had a bit of a realisation that was quite cool. I had a pleasing circularity to it. Um, because when I first did racing, it was 2002 was the year I first did it. I ran an Alfa Romeo 156 body shell in red. Um, and I just thought it was the coolest looking saloon car going. I just thought it was the sleekest, nicest looking saloon car. I loved the Alfa 156 body shell. And on the way to the racing, I realized, hold on, I am now driving to racing in a real red Alpha 156. And my 156 was built in 2002. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> I didn't bring the camera, so there's no footage for you today, unfortunately, just photographs. Um, I was on my own. I didn't really want to set up a tripod and distract other drivers. But oh, suit this up and go, go out footage, the new kid on the block who's never spoken to anybody here. Um, just distract people with the camera. That wasn't really on, so I didn't really want to do that. Anyway, how did I get on? How, how, wh how, what happened? Was it good? Was it bad? Well, I got set up. A um, few things I didn't know. I didn't know they insisted on having some sort of towel or pit mat because the people who rent out the hall didn't want the tables marked, so I've had to buy a pit mat. But I'm rolling one. Sorry about that for next time. That's all good. Um, charger was an issue. Uh, my charger is an old Overlander. I've got it here somewhere. Hold on. Here we go, RC6 Touch, an old Overlander, um, it's been fine for years, uh, it is rated for one cell lipos, it does say on it, one to six cell lipos, however, it doesn't do one cell lipos, <laughs> it just, it, maybe it's supposed to, obviously it's supposed to, but um, it wouldn't stop charging past 4.2 volts, it's supposed to stop, and I had to keep an eye on it because the voltage kept climbing, kept climbing, it kept charging because there's no balance port so there's no sensor, there's no feedback to the charger when you're doing one cell. It's supposed to just read the voltage and, I don't know, recognize the resistance or something. I don't know how, how that works. And that then cuts off, like we used to do with the nickel metal hydrides. But it didn't cut off, it kept climbing. I was really worried about the batteries puffing up or exploding or catching fire or something. So I've had to get a new charger. There's no way I'm risking that. No way. Um, so I had to get a new map, a new charger. I am... Um, Almost missed my first race. <laughs> um, it's, I'll show you, look, I'll show you. It's fine, I'll show you. The battery is really snug in there. It's difficult to get in and out. It's a bit fiddly. And uh, especially when you're trying to rush, you know, the guy had shouted or the, the computer voice had said, one minute till start of race one. I was like, oh, trying to get this all in and get this sorted and body shell on, body clips in. But I am getting slightly ahead of myself here because prior to that, the guy to my left on the table next to me told me about the uh, tire additives. Um, I've never ran tire ad additives before because it wasn't legal in the touring car stock class I used to race in. So he said to me, about 40 minutes before your race, put them all over the back tires. So I did that. And about 10 minutes before the race, do the inside edge only on the front tires. All right. And then just before you get on the track, dry your back tires off. You gotta have them nice and dry. Okay, fair enough. So. I'm rushing to get to the race. I'm, I'm trying to get there. Um, fighting with the battery, trying to get it in. It's fine. Fighting with the body shell. Managed to plug them all in. 30 seconds to go, literally. Put the car down. Sprinted up onto the stage. Tried to accelerate. And the car just pirouetted on the spot. It wouldn't go anywhere. Just whoop, 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 whoop. Well, that's a bit weird. Um, tried to fight it a little bit. And every time I tried to, I tried to get over there, and it's going, oh, oh, no, over here. No, no. It's just, it was a mess. Um, I was a bit worried that I'd 
screwed something up during the build process. Like, what have I done? What have I done? Is, is something misaligned? Is the suspension not sitting right? What's going on here? Uh, but actually, it was just the tires were still too wet, um, and they dry off on the carpet. So they, you know, a few awkward seconds of me going, Aah! eventually I could sort of get it roughly pointed where I was trying to go, line up last on the grid. Because I was starting fifth on the bottom of the bottom heat, uh, because obviously I've been away for almost two decades. I have no BRCA affiliation anymore, no ranking, brand new to the club, all the rest of it. So you start from the very bottom. So I lined up in last, fifth place. There was five people in the race, including me. Um, four adults and one little girl. So me, three other men and one little girl. Um, the club secretary guy asked me, do you want to do one lap, dry off your tires and then line up the back of it? I said, no, I'm going to, don't want to hold up the race at all. I'll just start at the back and wobble around until the tires up to temperature or whatever. And then we'll see how we're going. So the countdown happened and they buzz you off one at a time, in case you don't know. it's a, The first three races are qualifying stages, they're time-based, how many laps you can do in the five minutes. Uh, so it goes beep one, beep two, beep three, etc. until all the cars have gone off. So I started, you know, a couple of seconds behind car four. Um, it was very immediately obvious to me that the car is extremely twitchy, very twitchy, very quick change of direction. Um, I like a darty front end in my race cars. I like the front end to lead. Um, but it was a little bit too knife edge from even my taste. Um, it was just a bit of a handful, a bit of tarting. But actually, it was very impressive, very impressive how planted it was, despite how darty it was. Um, the back end didn't really break loose or anything. Um, it had plenty of grunt. It was balanced well. Um, I'm really surprised because obviously I'm used to tuning cars, four wheel drive, independent suspension, front and rear, uh, front and rear, double wishbone. Um, in this, with a floating pod rear, rear wheel drive, I didn't expect anything like a sort of competent handling, but it was really good, really good. That was totally took me by surprise. And something amazing happened. When in the first couple of laps, I started overtaking people. I overtook a few folk, I don't know how many. And then I was thinking, you know what? I, this is going quite well. I was so tense, so nervous. I was standing there stiff as a board. All my inputs were really erratic and sharp and had no, had no finesse, no control. I needed to calm down and get into rhythm, but I was all worked up. This is the first time in years. Oh, how, don't break your new car. Don't ruin someone else's race. Don't plow it into a wall. But no, I just needed to calm down. But I was doing okay. I was going getting past people. And then the first minute of update happened because every minute it tells you the current positions. It said, after minute one, positions after minute one, car five. I went, hold on, I'm car five. That's impossible. Am I winning this thing? And I was. I was winning the race. I was actually in the lead. And the car was amazing. And I kept winning. I was lapping people. Uh, and it, it felt like it went really, really quickly. To me, it felt like it went really fast. Um, apparently, it wasn't really fast. But to me, it felt fast. And one thing that struck me was my car was by far and away the quietest car in my race. By far and away. In fact, it was the quietest car at the club full stop. And I thought it was, oh, that's a sign I've done a good job of building it. It's nice and smooth. I thought that was a good thing. The quietest car. I can hardly hear it. That's a good thing, right? Oh, I thought wrong. There's a reason mine was the quietest car there. We'll get to it. But uh, yeah, I thought wrong. Anyway, I won my first race by three laps. I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. I was over the moon with that. I was relieved i was i was actually so still so tense and worked up that i i couldn't bring myself to smile and celebrate i was just like oh wow, 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 wow. but it was good it went really well <laughs> so i got back to the pits and realized i'd made a fateful error i'd uh, not brought a brush with me I hadn't brought a brush my car was filthy it's a new carpet um and there's tire additive and cars with foam tires ripping all the fibers up and uh, oh what a mess it was Everywhere, it was all over the chassis, all in all the components, it was underneath the shell. I've cleaned it since, it's looking pretty good now, but oh my goodness, what a mess. I always brought a brush with me, can't believe I forgot one. Anyway, so that was that, complete mess. I decided to try and calm down the front end of the car uh, for the second race, so I've reduced the toe end. You can still see it's a little bit towed in, it's slightly turned to the right at the moment, but um, there's a little bit of toe in. But beforehand, it was quite a lot of toe in, and it was very twitchy, very knife edge. I decided to calm it down a little bit. Um, I still 
like I said before, like a darty front end. I might fiddle with it some more, but I needed it to be more compliant and easier to drive because I was so inexperienced. But I was ready for race two this time, on time, two minutes to go, ready to go, um, put it down on the track and pirouetted all over the place again. <laughs> Just no grip. Uh, at least I knew this time why, you know, previously I was thinking, oh, what have I done wrong here? Uh, is there something wrong with the suspension? Is the chassis balance out? Is there something tweaked? But this time it was like, oh, tyres, yeah, I just need to wait for them to dry. Lined up in first this time, obviously, having won the first race. And I was a bit worried um, still. I mean, I was tense still. I wasn't relaxing at all yet. Um, just a bit, oh, oh, hope this goes as well. Um, you know, I, I just I couldn't relax. Um, it might sound silly on camera, but honestly, when you were there and I just, it was, it was, it seemed bigger than it was. I was just so tense. Um, so one of the things I was worried about, which didn't quite go well in the first race was lapping other cars. It didn't, it wasn't too bad, but I was a bit hesitant to jump down the inside of another car on the first race. Cause you know, I was a new kid. I was new to this. I didn't want to damage anybody else's car, damage my car. Um, but people were quite generous at moving, moving aside. That's fine. But I, I, I should have just commit faster and more confidently, but I wasn't. So in this race, I thought, right, okay, people are more aware now. Um, people are aware that the red and green and white one is quite quick. So if it's coming up behind you and you're up there, maybe they'll step aside, um, possibly. But it, it went better than the first race. Um, I did two more, I believe two more laps, maybe three more laps. I'm pretty sure it was two more laps. Post. Post. Two more laps in the first race and uh, my fastest lap, I got the fastest lap in the first race as well. My fastest lap was over a second faster than my previous fastest lap. So it went well. I lapped people a bit. There's still a little bit of miscommunication with well lapping people and bumping off in the ring, but it went well and I won the second race as well. So pretty good. And by, by the time I picked up the car after the second race, I thought, you know what? I'm enjoying this a lot. I'm enjoying this immensely. Um, but it was beginning to relax a little bit, beginning to get into the flow of it. The car was clearly capable, clearly capable. Uh, I just needed to relax myself and let it do its thing. Um, it wasn't quite as darty. Um, it was still pretty darty, but it, it, it could still carry really good corner speed. It could still, you, you could still bury it in a corner with very little braking at pretty high speed. Um, it was it was good, it was really good. Having done my marshalling duties, I sat down, took the shell off. Oh, look at the state of it. Look at the state of it. It was even worse. I mean, obviously it was going to get worse every race. I had nothing I could do, but I didn't want to borrow a brush for it because I knew I could just brush it when I get home. But what a mess. What a mess. Still the quietest car. Still thought that was a good thing. Really wasn't. Didn't change anything for race three. Just thought, you know what? I just need to get into my rhythm, get, get a little bit more into the flow of things. The car's good. The car's currently better than I am. So don't touch the setup. Just get practice. Just get into your rhythm. So I did that, race three, even faster, even better fastest lap. Uh, not by much, but a little bit faster fastest lap. Um, I, did, I think it was the most laps I did of the entire day. I think I did one more than race two. And uh, yeah, it was great. It was really good. Uh, race three was spot on. Um, a couple of mistakes, but nothing too serious. I really enjoyed it. And I came away from race three smiling properly for the first time because I, I'd relaxed at that point. It was, it was great. You know, this is going really well. People were complimenting the shell. People like the shell. People were saying, well done, you're driving well and stuff. And I thought, this is a friendly place to be. I'm really enjoying it. The people are great. Um, there's friendly competition. It's not spiteful and horrible. I didn't expect that, but occasionally you do get a bad egg somewhere. It was great. Then I had to find out what finals we were in. Now, the finals are based on your fastest race time. Quite simply, the first three were qualifying heats. So that's how you set your finals. Um, I started last in the B final. Which I found surprising. I won't. Be, I won't lie. I found that really surprising because not not disappointing because I had no expectations at all. And the guys, I've seen the guys in, in the heat above me. They were fast. Although it was surprising because some of them were very keen on hitting walls. So there's there's a few of them that were making more more mistakes than I was. So I was surprised to find myself last in the B final. What that meant was I was last and slowest out of everybody who wasn't in my original heat. That was surprising because well. I was about three laps faster than the next fastest guy in my heat. So obviously the difference between the B heat and the C heat is quite big. Um, but anyway, that's fine, whatever. Started last. So I've car six now, there were six people in my final. 
put the car down, did donuts again, obviously. Um, crowd pleasing, that's all I was doing. Crowd, crowd pleasing, it's good. Lined up last. Now, this is a proper grid, not you don't go away staggered. It's you know, when the goal goes, it's all off at once. Proper race, you get five minutes, and that's it, head to head. Time doesn't matter, position matters when the goal goes. Nice one, Mike. Anyway, the guy in front of me, in fifth, was a slightly older guy, older gentleman, obviously didn't have the best reactions in the world. When the sound went for us to go, I easily jumped past him. So I was comfortably past him by the time he set off. Set, set off, off. But I knew immediately I was in trouble. Um, he matched me by the first corner. So I got past him, and by the time we reached the first corner, he, I mean, bear in mind, I was already up to whatever percent speed by the time he set off behind me. We both arrived at the first corner together. So he immediately got past me. His car was much faster. Everyone's car was much faster. <laughs> Everyone's. Um, yes, my car was a slowpoke in the B final. Um, goodness knows what it would be like in the A final. Uh, down the straight and out of the corners. Out of the corners, it was sluggish compared to everybody else's car in that race. But down the straight, it would just get mullered. Um, it was still the quietest. Every else's car had a real distinct whine to it, which I thought was maybe bearing issue or whatever. Um, maybe the dirt and the fibers had got into the workings into the mechanicals. No, no, there was a different reason for that. But it was slow in the straight line, too slow. Um, and although I think I drove better in the final than I did in the previous three heats, um, I did less laps in the final than I did in heat three uh, because I couldn't get into rhythm at all because you'd sort of try and settle in and then you'd have to let someone pass to lap you and then you try and settle in again and the next person would come and lap you. So it was constantly, every lap, lap and a half, I'd have to let someone through. So um, yeah, I couldn't really get into rhythm. I made a few mistakes, not too many, probably the least of all the races possibly. I think overall I drove the best in the final than I did on the other three, but and I did have a faster, fastest lap in the final than I did in any other three races, but I did one less lap. I think, maybe two, I think one less lap than I did on my third heat. But it was fine. I finished the final in fifth out of six because somebody retired with broken steering. So I started sixth, finished fifth, um, last of the finishers and a few laps behind the first place car. Um, but I was happy. I'd, I'd come to the club with no expectations. I'd won three races in a row. My first race in 17 years, I'd won it. I then got into the B final first time out. I was really pleased. But why was the car so slow? Well, you could look at gearing. Um, I couldn't hear my car. So, you know, back in the day when I was judging my gearing on my touring car, I would listen. Whenever it hit full RPM or down the main straight, I would listen. Try and get it to hit peak RPM just at the end of the main straight so there's no wasted RPMs. Um, try and get it to come out the corner as well. Couldn't do that. Couldn't hear it. But the gearing seemed pretty good because it was within the ballpark of everybody else. Um, and also the temps were good. The motor was mildly warm, the speed controller was mildly warm, the battery was icy cold. Obviously it was geared pretty well. Maybe slightly over because it was slow, slow coming out of corners. But what about the top speed? Well, somebody asked me, have you adjusted your motor timing? No, this is the stock class, you can't do that. That was the rules for the stock class that I used to run in 17 years ago for the touring cars. In GT12 stock racing, you can adjust your motor timing. And motor timing adjusted cars make a very distinct whining noise. <laughs> no damn wonder my car was so slow compared to everybody else's. <laughs> everybody else had turned the motors up and I hadn't. I mean, there's a limit to how much I can claw back. I've got some really good lifos. This is a lovely little motor. This is the Sky RC Aries Pro version 2, 13.5 turn. It's a nice little motor. But the version 2.1 had come out and the version 3 had come out. This motor is a few years out of date now. I'm not too worried about that because if I get the timing right and the gearing right, the very latest motors won't be hugely faster. Not really. I mean, it's only, what, three years old. It was released new about three or four years ago. So it's out of date, but it's not massively out of date. However, I noticed a lot of people, a lot of people in that club were using the um, the latest hobby wing, which is 3,600 kV. This is only 3,050. So 550 kV 
is a great proportion of the total RPM of this motor. So there will be very little I can do about it. It will still be slower than everybody else's, or everybody else with that motor, for example. But I can get a little bit more out of it. I think I'm going to turn the timing up and gear it down two teeth. Um, I've never done this before, so I'm going to do it very slightly and try and work my way into it because I don't want to cook the motor. So yes, slow car in a straight line. It seemed fine in the first heats because there were two club cars there that people were borrowing. The club cars are a little bit tuned down, um, obviously, because new, new, new beginners, new people, new noobs, new folk. But no, overall, great night. I really enjoyed myself. Uh, incidentally, the uh, chairman, club secretary, club Jedi, whatever his title is, uh, recorded the three finals. So you can see the final race, uh, the B final. I'll put a link below. You can see how I got on. Um, yeah, it's quite obvious the speed deficit, but also obvious how consistent some of the front guys are. I need to work on that consistency. But I had a good time. It's all about having fun. I did have fun. And I think I did certainly didn't make a fool of myself out there. And I can't wait to go again tomorrow, as because I said Friday, Friday's the race night, so Thursday as I'm recording this. Should be time to go again. However, I am off work today because I'm sick. Um, we'll see if I can get around to it tomorrow. Hopefully I can. I won't record every session. Certainly won't. I won't update every session either because um, I do plan on making a sort of diary of this, the race of diary. Um, but with my new job, I'm struggling to find time to put content out. And if I'm asked to do every week an update on this, this channel would very quickly become dominated with just updates on the GT12 racing and nothing else. I don't want that. I want to, I'd much rather produce good quality content, you know, every now and again, rather than constantly turning out the same sort of video every week. So, yes, I will, I will update you regularly, semi-regularly, but I won't be doing every single week updates on this car, on the, on the racing. But anyway, that's how we got on. Really enjoyed myself. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon. Cheerio.